It is time once again for Turks and Jerks, TYT Sports, best and worst of the NFL. And it is time once again to it yell angrily at J.R. Jackson and Ben Mankiewicz for whatever ridiculous reasons they couldn't make it in the studio. But when times are tough, you look for upgrades. So I upgraded Ben and J.R. to the glorious Jacorius in the booth. How we doing, Jacory? What's up? I'm doing good. How you doing? Jacory's the realest person in the booth, by the way, every single time. No, no offense, Irma. We love you, too. Uh, but uh, as you can see behind me, it's uh, the same uh, background as last week because Khalil Mack is still a beast and the Bears uh, still did jerk-worthy things. Uh, we're going to start with the worst of the week, and uh, Jacory I know, has a good one because he caught up with the <laughs> with Aqib Tlaib and uh, Harry Douglas of the Tennessee Titans in a scrappy, scrappy football game. Jacory, enlighten me. Yeah, man. So just like an unnecessary cheap shot from this guy who's like like a B-list fucking receiver anyway. Uh, Harry Douglas just drops down and fucking tries to take out uh, Chris Harris's knee. Chris Harris is like a really good cornerback, too. So that's, you know, that's 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 not only targeting, but it's almost like that could be career ending, dude. Like you got you can't do that stuff. It's it's the sport that's given you all an opportunity to really do something great, and you really can't take advantage of it like that. You, that's disgusting, man. What crushes me about it is it wasn't just Chris Harris; it was also a keep to leap. And uh, and what's funny is uh, Douglas said after the game that the he was getting specific. So he starts talking in the press conference about the Chris Harris block. I mean, technically it was a legal block, man. Yeah, what about the keep to leap block? That was far from legal. And what's even crazier about it is uh, Aqib Tlaib's not somebody you want on your enemy list. Now, it's amazing because as a lot of the, the comments and threads over at like Real GM, Reddit, a few other places, were saying the day where Aqib Tlaib isn't the dirty player in a situation involving Aqib Tlaib is a shocking day in the <laughs> right, NFL. Right, It really is. And uh, we have some pictures. I know Ja'Cory's like doing four things at once here. It's like, like I said... He's a remarkable director. That right at his knee, man. That's helmet to the knee. Come on. As it's planted, too, that can do some damage. Hyperextension. Are you kidding me? What's ridiculous, what's amazing, too, is that and Tlaib goes after Harry Douglas later, like later in the game, non unsurprisingly. And the best part of all of it, right, would be the fact that Emmanuel Sanders gets 15 yards for pitching. For throwing a touch, uh, pitch in a touchdown yeah, right. celebration. For dancing, yeah. But Douglas didn't get a call. Not 15 yards. I mean, I'm sure they're going to review it. I can't imagine he doesn't get some form of fine for the extremely dirty play. But it seems like Aqib Tlaib wants to take care of this. Chris Harris is kind of staying away in terms of like a lot of commentary. Tlaib seems to want to take care of this his own way. Tlaib feels, well, I think I have the video. Yeah, let's just run to element number nine, and we'll see how Tlaib feels about it. It was a dirty play by a sorry player. He don't do nothing. He come to the game, don't catch no passes. He come to the game to chop guys from the back. And he got the same agent as me. So when I see his ass in Atlanta, I'm going to beat his ass. <laughs> Can't really disagree with Aqib Tlaib. I mean, you shouldn't be telling the press who you're going to kick, you know, kick the crap out of in the postseason, or uh, I should say the offseason. But this is... You know, I look at this and I go, eh, Tlaib's right in this situation. And I can't say Tlaib's been right in a lot of situations, but he's a, a, a fantastic defensive back. He's always been. And for a player that was in limbo with the Denver Broncos ahead of this season, is they going to sign him? Are they going to try to get rid of him? Are they going to release him? Uh, he's ended up being a difference maker for the team this year. And, of course, in certain team aspects, he's standing up for his player and Chris Harris, who, by the way, as Tlaib put it, Harry Douglas, a sorry ass player with zero catches in that game. So uh, uh, the dirtiest—that's probably the dirtiest play of the season. Would you say it's the dirtiest play of the season? Yeah, absolutely, man. Absolutely. I can't think and of like and like and I'm like factoring in all like Vontez Burfix bullshit. Like, <laughs> like there's been some nastiness going on this season, and and this still probably tops it. Like that is just blatant. It wasn't even like near the play. It wasn't the play was over. Like you knew it was on the opposite end. Like it wasn't necessary either time. It was. Do it was they think that there's like, not 1,400 cameras apparent at the games? Right. Do they still think it's like 1980 where like, they're shooting this like in black and white. Because they, they don't care, exactly, because the NFL has shown that, like, exactly, because he didn't get a penalty, and, like, we'll, we're yet to see if he's going to get a fine. The NFL has shown they don't care, like, it, and, and Vontez Burfick is still on the field, like, these players still get away with it, now Dominican too, still dominating the stat chart, like, it's still, you know, it. these players don't get punished for it, so they continue to do it. It's pretty messed up, man. All right, so that's the dirtiest play of the season, undoubtedly. Let's move on to uh, another great jerk. Um, Jeff Fisher is a jerk. So we were discussing on our Turks and Jerks this morning how poor of a coach 
Jeff Fisher is and now was. He tied the record for being the losingest coach of all time. He did sign his contract extension, which the contract extension was already in place in the uh, preseason. And then he, I guess he signed it at some point last week. And now they fired him. <laughs> and the Rams fans are ecstatic about it. Stan Kroenke, man, we're trying to figure out here in the studio, like, what could be the reasons for firing Jeff Fisher now, opposed to a week ago, opposed to two weeks ago, opposed to never hiring him in the first place. Uh, and the only reason we have is bad ownership. Kroenke's just a bad owner. He doesn't know what he's doing, uh, which is probably true. Uh, a couple really quick tweets that I saw from USA Today, though. The number one reason Harbaugh is going to the Rams, this is like the best tweets have been trending, is the John Har uh, Jim Harbaugh rumor. The Sun, show tweet. My other favorite one, not trying to get anyone to panic, but if you rearrange the letters and quote Jim Harbaugh is leaving, you get L.A. Rams. All right, we'll throw in some other tweets for you there, too, that were pretty funny. And now we're going to throw back to this morning's discussion about how bad of a coach or at least how poor of a coaching record Jeff Fisher's had in 22 seasons. Thanks to Reddit for pointing this one out. The Atlanta Falcons scored more touchdowns in the Coliseum than the Los Angeles Rams have all season long in that blowout. So I know JR's not even here, and I'm going to pick on the Rams. I texted him a lot about picking on the Rams, and he didn't even have it. His jerk was also uh, uh, Harry Douglas, Chris, uh, Keeb Tlaib, and that whole dirty play. Ten consecutive losing seasons for the Rams. Jeff Fisher, his sixth straight. He also has five seasons where his team finished 8-8. Eight and eight. That makes 16 out of his 22 seasons his team has finished with a non-winning record. Reddit GTG Fast, gotta go fast, was the one who pointed that one out. The Chargers are 5-8 and eight this season and are also coming to Los Angeles next year. We could have had the Raiders. We could have had Khalil Mack and Derek Carr. And Amari Cooper, and an explosive offense, oh, and a winning football that. team, imagine and instead, that. we got a combined garbage teams. We got two teams that if you put together, I am not convinced, if you took the best players <laughs> out of both teams, save for an old-ass Antonio Gates still playing good football, right. I am not convinced they can win. I'm not convinced that they can make the playoffs. I'm not. How did I'd that happen? I have to agree with that. The Chargers and the Rams together are coming to Los Angeles. We could have had the Raiders here in LA. St. Louis could have stuck with the Rams. J.R. would have been fine. They were better in St. Louis anyway. The Chargers, I mean, I know a couple Chargers fans down in San Diego who are really upset about this. And what I find remarkable about this whole combined, by the way, Jeff Fisher also got a contract extension for, you know, 16 out of 22 losing seasons or non-winning seasons because some of the 500 years. So what that tells me is Rams general management sees, sees mediocrity as extension-worthy football. And Jared Goff, I could be so wrong about this in two or three years. I think they should be drafting a quarterback next year too. You got to rehaul. You have to first of all, you have to fire your offensive coordinator. I don't, I don't, Jeff Fisher gets an extension. That doesn't mean you have to rehire your offensive coordinator. And two, they got to draft. They got to draft a, draft actual weapons, an offensive line. They have Todd Gurley who can't find a like a seam of space, let alone try to make it himself with an offensive line that collapses on him before he even gets the ball. And the Rams are the most unwatchable team in the National Football League. They are less watchable than the Cleveland Browns. And I say that because the Cleveland Browns at least have playmakers in Terrell Pryor who makes a game somewhat interesting. Yes, the 0-13 Browns who did not beat the, uh, the, Chargers this week, uh, the Bengals this weekend. 0-13 Browns are more watchable than the St. Louis Rams. And possibly more watchable if you combine them with the San Diego Chargers. <laughs> Those are your jerks of the week, undoubtedly. It was easy this week. They made life too easy this week. And we will move on to Turks in just a second, where I get to talk about them New York football giants. See you next time. Comment below.